In this video, we're going to show how to fund a JAX wallet using GDAX Exchange. Now, the setup is on one end. We've got the GDAX interface here. It's a web interface, and we're going to we're going to fund the JAX wallet with Litecoin. So we've got one Litecoin on the GDAX side, and we're going to fund a JAX wallet uh, using GDAX. Now, one thing to mention is that when you're using a JAX wallet, you can send and receive funds from the Jax wallet but you can't purchase funds using the Jax wallet so you have to purchase the funds from somewhere else in order to actually uh, after you purchase them then you can send them to the Jax wallet and so we're going to use GDAX to do the purchase which I've already got the one Litecoin here and then once you have the the coins that you want to send to Jax then you can just uh, follow uh, what we're about to do in this video so I'm going to click on the, in the JAX wallet, uh, we've got the Chrome extension here, and I've clicked on the Litecoin option. It's a fresh wallet. It's got uh, no Litecoin present here, no transaction history. And so in order to do the actual transaction, all we're going to need is this Litecoin address. If we were doing the transaction from a mobile device, then we could just take a, a photo of this QR code, which is just this address. Um, dressed up in, in, in a different format. So we can just go ahead and use this address by clicking the button here. This will copy that address to the clipboard. And that's all we need to do on the Jack side in order to do a transaction from GDAX uh, to the Jack swap. You just need your, your Litecoin address. So I've copied that to the clipboard. We'll come back over into GDAX. We've got one Litecoin available. In order to send this Litecoin to Jack to the Jacks wallet, we need to just click withdraw. And this gives us the option to withdraw funds. So the options available to us are bank account, bank wire, we can withdraw to Coinbase, or we can withdraw to a Litecoin address. Now the Litecoin address is what we have copied to our clipboard from inside the Jacks wallet. So we'll choose Litecoin address. We choose the amount. It's going to be one Litecoin. That's the balance. And then we need to paste in our address. So this is a, the address from the Jax wallet. And then the next thing is to put in your two-factor authentication code. And if you're using a decent or if you're using a centralized exchange, the recommendation is to generally always use two-factor authentication at the bare minimum. Once you've got your code in place, your amount and your destination, typically you want to double check your your location because if this is if your destination ad address is wrong then then you, you'll lose your funds. So go back into Jax, the Litecoin address, just make sure that starts with LMD, ends with a Q, looks good. So then we just click withdraw funds. And GDAX tells us you've successfully withdrawn one Litecoin. So we'll exit out of here and let's go check out the Jax wallet. Load a Litecoin, refreshing balance, payment received, and we've got our one Litecoin. So the transaction went through super fast, and then our transaction history just updated. So if it doesn't go through, if it doesn't go through right away, just give it a second. Take some time to refresh, and notice that the first thing we see is unconfirmed. And now what we want to see in a couple of minutes is we want to see a number of confirmations coming through here. So we'll see one confirmation, two confirmation, three. Okay, I'm back here to finish this demonstration. I wanted to give Jax a little bit of time to um, refresh and let the transaction go through and get confirmed. It's been about 30 minutes or so, so we'll open Jax back up and see. If we were able to get our transaction confirmed, we'll go to Litecoin, and we've 
got one Litecoin balance and here we are confirmed now so we are confirmed and we see if we click the transaction we can see we've got six confirmations now after you uh, whenever you whenever you sent whenever you send a Litecoin what happens is the the transfer goes to the blockchain and it it gets included in a block and the miners mine it and they include your your transaction in a block and then once that block uh, gets stored on the blockchain every time another block gets stored after uh, that's called a, a confirmation and typically for a, a transaction to be considered um, permanent you you usually want to get about six or more I think that's that's what they're requiring now so that's why Jack showed us up to six and then they just put a plus there so we'll close out of Jack's and then I'll just point you to this um, this confirmation page uh, on the Bitcoin wiki you can see here's where they they cite the six blocks deep and they talk about for merchants and exchanges they set their own threshold till their funds are considered to be confirmed so with the Jack's wallet we use we we take six um, but go ahead I'll leave this in the description down below I hope this uh, video has been um, been helpful please like and subscribe thanks